God's mighty wings beneath us to lift us one and all. JFK used to say that a rising tide lifts all boats. May it be so. This morning, let's share our song, Psalm 85. Psalm 85. It's a beautiful Advent song. It's a beautiful song about peace. <coughs> For the leader of the Korah, the it's a psalm. Lord, you are favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Selah. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before Him, and will make a path for His steps. May the Lord richly bless this reading of his holy word. This is a wonderful psalm and just so it makes sense today. Let me give you a quick word about the context. In my notes I have this later but I think I need to give it up front. Uh, this is about Israel, Jacob going back to the promised land. And it's about that initial morning joy that they get. We're back in our land! Praise the Lord! That's the first three verses. But then they start to look around. And uh, the old theater is broken down. Everything is ruins. And they realize that they've got a tremendous amount of work ahead of them because things aren't right. And then in that, oh Lord, Okay, you brought us back, but there's, oh God, there's so much work to do here. Can you help us? They take the promises of God and they apply them to their present situation and they have hope. They say that the God who gave us such a blessing in the morning, even though it's cloudy now, He's going to give us, the sun is going to shine a little later on. You know, and that's kind of analogous to when we come to faith in Jesus. We start, we come to faith in Him. Our sins are forgiven. We have a new start. Our souls are clean. And there's joy. And it's great. There's a relief. But then sometimes we start looking around. Our lives may be a mess. We may have things that are undone. The fact that our faith is always an already and a not yet. It's what already God has already done. And and not yet. And there's, we still have struggles. We're, we're still on the face of this earth. And there's a lot yet to be done. And that is what this psalm is about. That God never leaves anything unfinished. And that in this Advent season, we have Jesus. But Jesus is also, there's also a lot of not yet in our lives. We live in a crazy world. The other day I saw this sign on a car. It said economical, and I can't remember exactly what it was. It was a business plastered all over this car. I think it was economical construction. I took a second look, uh, economical. But what I remember seeing about this sign, it was on this huge, brand new looking, bright yellow, four door hum. <laughs> <laughs> economical whatever, on this hum. That was brand new without a spot. I don't know about you, but that guy's not going to give me an estimate. <laughs> and I never want to get a bill from him, because that's a contradiction. 
Uh, I mean, helmers are nice. You know, God bless you. But I wouldn't call it economic. I would call it luxurious construction, or whatever it is. But, but don't try to sell me a technology. That's the way the world is. Kind of like that economical construction on the side of that Hummer. It's a lot. It's not true. Somebody's got to pay for that Hummer. And if he's doing work for it, it's probably going to be you. The world promises us peace. It cannot deliver. It cannot deliver. By definition, it cannot deliver. I have some questions this morning as we come to the table. Actually, the table is going to come to us. How do you find peace when you're hanging in midair? How do you find peace when you're looking for a job? How do you find peace when your marriage is strained? Or when you're facing a brick wall? How do you find peace when the doctor says it's cancer? Or you have this much percentage of your heart left. How do you find peace when you can't relate to your kids or you have a very difficult boss or a difficult person in your life that you have to deal with? How do you find peace when you're, when you're aging? I mean, sometimes people say to, play, say to me playfully, don't get old. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Let's unpack that a little bit. Okay? Now, if I don't get old, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. There's some rough options there. <laughs> Getting old is a challenge. Okay? And there are other challenges as well, but the other option. How do you find peace when you're dealing with disability? Quick view from the Advent reading. This morning I want to tell you peace is a possibility. It is a possibility. Second thing I want to tell you, peace is a process. Peace is a process. It's not something that, you know, you just get. It's a process. A lot of my life I would just describe as, I don't want to use words that are too desperate, but I'm going to use a desperate word, despair. It's like, oh God, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then I go to God and He gives me breakthrough. And that's exciting. It's exciting. You and I, you know, this morning we can't solve anyone's problems. And in fact, it's dangerous if we try. But we can help each other problem solve. Yeah. We can help each other. We can receive from God. And we can help to give each other tools. And to develop each of our gifts and graces. Together. And that's called the body of Christ. Peace is a process. I want to say two things about the process. Part of the process is perspective. We need to have a good perspective. Take courage, Jesus says. I have to overcome the world. That means there will be some things that you and I need to overcome. That statement is, is full of news. That we will have things in our lives which we will need to overcome. Troubles happen. I learned something new this week. There's a Jewish concept called Kabbalah. And the basic principle of Kabbalah is simply this. Obstacles are an opportunity to connect with light. Obstacles are an opportunity to connect with the light. In other words, unless there are obstacles, you're probably not even going to be paying attention to that light. To that light. In the angst of growth, in the anxiety of life, we can find the angles of peace. We can find the angles of peace. I'm on the table. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did I take a hit? <laughs> quite a loud truck out there. I'm a little dirty. I'm still standing and we can continue. Wow. I'm on a district committee on ministry. And uh, people come and they tell their stories. And I, I can't reveal confidentialities. But I hear some exciting stories. I heard one this week. A person was 38 years old. They were called to ministry when they were 10. All through their lives, all through their lives, they, but they were facing obstacles. This person did every job in the church. 
I, I kind of was thinking, I almost said it out loud, it was kind of like, well, you're in God's management training program. You know, you do every job. And now this person, they described one thing that I want to tell you about. When they started seminary, to be a sacrament of word, to be a pastor of word, sacrament, service, and order, they felt a peace. We're talking a 28-year journey. And it's not over. It's not over. Part of the process of peace is perspective. We're on a journey. Part of the process of peace is prayer. In this Advent season, a cornerstone of the Advent characters is prayer. We're going to learn more in adult Sunday school today. More in Sunday school. These people, they take the rope down that God gives, the line down, and they're hanging on to it. They're not just wishing. They're actually on real God hope. They're actually on real hope from God. The Christmas story is full of people of prayer. People are tuned into God. You now, prayer doesn't always just mean going into a prayer closet and closing your eyes and praying. It means being tuned in as you're driving down the road, as you're it's your, it's your job when you're in your neighborhood. Simeon and Anna, a little later in the Christmas story, there were people who were tuned into God. And when Jesus walked in the door, they felt peace. They felt peace. When Jesus walks into the door of our lives, I pray that we feel peace too. A quick word about prayer, though. Indulge me for about two minutes. The year was 1977, the month was September. I had just started college at Stockton State, now the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey. My grades then would not get me in now. Uh, it was the first Saturday night I was there. Three of us were out on the town, three guys. We were operating on a third of a brain. Okay. You know, the three boys are together, not all the time. Not my kids, certainly, they're smart. Okay. One boy, one brain, two boys, half a brain, three boys, third of a brain. Just divide the brains by the boys. Present. It was a Saturday night, Atlantic City. We decided to drive into Atlantic City. This is before casinos, and it was the night in the Miss America pageant. We needed dates, so we went to look. <laughs> I'll never forget. We turned the corner, <laughs> and all of a sudden I saw the red lights behind us. He immediately pulled us over. He said, you're on a one-way street. Turn around. It was a tow truck driver with the police department. Thank God, he had no ticket for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I tell this story? Prayer is not a one-way street. It's not just telling God what you want. In fact, real prayer is that line coming down from heaven and receiving God's plan in our lives. That's real hope. The other, it's dialogue. Second, in this psalm that I just read, in this psalm that I just read, the concept of turn, turning, is mentioned several times. It's not like you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you turn once. No. You accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you turn, and then you keep turning. You keep turning to Him. And there will be seasons when you're going the wrong way down a one-way street and somebody will politely say to you, turn, turn around. And that's what this psalm is about. Even when it gets cloudy, turn, turn, turn. Verses 1 through 3, blessing. We get saved. We get in a real vital personal relationship with God. The weight pressing down on us is lifted. Sins are forgiven. There's a hideous stain that's absorbed by God and hidden. He absorbs it all. The Israelites go back to the land. They go back to the land after the exile. Verses 4 through 7. There's still issues. There's still issues. There's still issues. Even in the blessedness, there's more work to do. There's relationships that need to be healed in our lives. There's a hurting world out there that needs to hear the same good news that we have gotten. Yes, 
Sometimes the resources appear to be slender. Yes, you may even be appalled at what's ahead of you. It's just a reminder to keep in touch. Keep in touch. To walk and talk with God. Good news is just around the corner. God leaves no work unfinished. None of the morning promise will be unfulfilled. That's what this psalm is telling us. None of the morning promise will be unfulfilled. He, he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That's what we celebrated at our 200th. And there's a little bit of an elbow in the ribs. One of the commentaries I read gave me a little elbow in my ribs. God does not half withdraw his anger. And if God seems to do so, it is only because men and women have only half turned from their sins. Got a little elbow on the ribs. God started his work. And when you hit the bumps, pray, 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 push, pray until something happens. God will finish his work. And the last part of the psalm is divine promises applied to present discouragement. Who needs that this morning? Do you need some divine promises applied to present discouragement? God has a peace package for each of us this morning, custom made. It will fit you. You don't have to take it back to the store. Although, God would certainly want to fellowship with you about if you need to talk to him about your peace package. God will make a way. Push. Peace is a process. Peace involves prayer. Push. Pray until something happens. Perfect love casts out fear. 